You're such an asshole. So uh, many of you have been requesting me uh, to get my take on the 2023 bank crisis, bank crash, whatever uh, we're in the middle of now. And while I'm humbled and I appreciate the request, because, yeah, I, I was an economist. I was. And I wrote a book predicting the housing crash before or the financial crisis before. Uh, the truth of the matter is that I'm not in banking and I'm not an economist anymore. Uh, I've kind of migrated. I still use my economic skills uh, and apply it to the to the dating market and the marriage market uh, and the ramifications that has for economics. So in that regard, I guess I'm more of a sociologist, economist. And, you know, I'm really, really lame then. Um, but I haven't back the the only reason I was on my game as much as I was up to the the crash the first time because I was stuck at these crap banks. I saw their portfolios. None of these bankers could keep up with me. I was in underwriting and I could do my job super quick because 100% uh, truthful baby boomers don't know anything about Excel or computers or programming. And uh, I had a lot of time on my hands. So I was able to read copious amounts of reports and data and analysis. And yeah, it was, it was pretty clear. I don't have that time. And I'm not stuck in an office where I got to look busy for six hours a day because my boomer boss doesn't understand Excel. Uh, so I've been hiking and, and enjoying life instead. <clears throat> but uh, to contribute something to the, the national conversation, the international conversation we're having about this current financial crisis or banking crash or whatever you want to call it, I wanted to give you a take that no one else is going to have, uh, not because I'm some kind of amazing economist. I am that. But but you're talking heads and your finance do bros and your analysts. They don't, they just don't think. They're just they're just academics and they don't think. I'm gonna tell you what the underlying problem is, why we keep having banking crises, why we keep having financial crises, why is like, well, why can't they get this their act together? Didn't we just didn't we just have one 15 years ago? Yeah, we did. We did. Um, so that when it happens, you understand the root cause. And it's not a Scooby-Doo mystery. And you're like, why can't they figure it out? And so let me talk to you about what the bankers were doing when I worked for banks back in the day, all right? All bankers, all of them, the ones I worked for, and obviously the ones that got the, the ran their banks into the ground, Lehman Brothers, now Credit Suisse First Boston. I wish, I actually, a little side note, I used to save my rejection letters and like, I'll show them and I threw them away. I should have, I had like at least five rejection letters from Credit Suisse First Boston and um, a ton from Lehman Brothers, but they're gone and I'm still here. But every banker, every finance professional, except for your data analysts and your CPAs who do the accounting, all of them, as I've said before, <clears throat> want engineer money without engineer work. But in addition to that, they want the ego. They want the investment. They want to have the corner office. They want to be in the uh, executive staff or the executive seat suite. They want to be CIO or CFO or CTO or whatever. <clears throat> um, they want the status and the prestige that comes with it but they absolutely do not want to do the work. That's why they're wheeling and dealing and dude, bro, we're making the deals and it's all sales and stuff like that. So there's this huge ego investment, but we have a word for people who want to live the lifestyle, but not put in the work. And it's called LARPing. And what you got to understand is that that is nearly all of the, at least the executive leadership, senior and middle management uh, people go into finance. Um, they're they're LARPers. They don't want to do the work, but they want the boats. Why do you think they make movies out of it all the time? Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I don't know how many. <clears throat> what what's his? Oh, the the soy boy kid that the Democrats just couldn't couldn't get enough of. Uh, FTC, the crypto guy. Um, all all these Wall Street criminals. Uh, who's the other guy? The one with the hedge fund. Richard Dreyfus portrayed the guy in a movie. I keep forgetting his name. All these successful guys all inevitably result or resort to theft, fraud, embezzlement, whatever. Anderson Consulting, theft, lying, which is an obsolete dead company right now. 
And the reason why is they're just lazy. They don't want to do the work, but they're addicted to that lifestyle. <clears throat> and I saw it in the bankers. I talk about the clients, but the bankers were a baller. But imagine this, like a 60-year-old boomer still thinking it's middle school and high school, and I got to get a boat on Lake Havasu, bro. Boat on Minnetonka, bro. I'm like, dude, shouldn't you be looking at retirement? <clears throat> I'll pull you out the pasture. And so there's this ego component, and they want to live the lifestyle. And so that's what they do. They LARP. Now, here's where it gets interesting <clears throat> and how it's so telling of the U.S. economy. Everybody wants to LARP. That's our economy right now. Everybody wants to LARP. No one wants to do the work. They all want to play make-believe. They're a Silicon Valley executive, a banking executive, and it goes all the way down the chain, and I will show you. <clears throat> The bankers back in my day were LARPing, obviously, just as the bankers today are LARPing. They're losers, they're parasites, they're sad, they're pathetic, they're untalented, they're unintelligent, and they got small dicks. May that last one isn't true, but everything else I said about them is true. They're not, in my day, it wasn't just the bankers that were LARPing. It was all these washed up wannabe, uh, in that time, <clears throat> it was real estate. I'm a real estate developer, bro. I'm real estate. Oh, I got my boat. And I, got and I looked at their financial statements. And I look at their income taxes. And I did the underwriting. These guys ain't got no money. Yeah, okay. They got a $5 million house, but there's $5.5 million of debt and mortgages uh, signed up against it. Their company, yeah, they, ladies, little inside baseball for you because you don't know the difference between sales and net income. Let me tell you when you got some dude, bro, talking up. Yeah, I brought in $10 million. Uh, that's their sales. What they actually took home is their net income. <laughs> and these guys, we make 10 million in sales. I'm like, I don't care about your sales. What's your cash flow? What's your net income? Minus 250,000. Well, the waitress next door that you're hitting on makes more than you. She's also wealthier than you. So these guys were also LARPing. They wanted to live the lifestyle, bro. They want to have the boats on lakes. They want to have the fancy downtown condo. They want to have the house on, on the river. But they didn't want to do the work. And, oh, by God, by God, they absolutely wanted to feel like big shots pulling up in their Mercedes and their Beamers. Hell, if you want to look more recently, it doesn't have to do either with the previous financial crisis or this one. Uh, going back home into, you know, into Minnesota, there was a guy who started up some kind of vaporware company. I think it managed nursing or something like that. It was all fake, but he bought the house on Lake Minnetonka, bro. Everything was going great, bro, because the bank kept lending him money. I don't know how people kept lending these people money. <clears throat> well, then he missed a payment or whatever. The house of cards came falling down. Fortunately, he had a family. And his logical conclusion, because his ego, these guys are egotists, man. His ego was so big. His logical conclusion was, I'm going to shoot my wife and my children. Look it up. And sadly, that's not the only instance of that happening where an ego a maniac, dude broing it, LARPing as an executive or a baller, has reality come kick him right in his little, you know, mosquito nuts. And he decides, oh, I'll just logically kill my family. Yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> now, instead of real estate developers, it is disproportionately Silicon Valley dude bros. I had this happen back when I was in 1998. I worked for a dot-com startup. The guy was a dude bro. He was an outright criminal. All he would do was take investor money from overseas, including his dad, play make-believe corporate executive. There was vaporware. There was no product. There was no profits. And now I can't find that guy, not because he's gone missing or is dead, but you never see him again because his reputation is ruined forever. <clears throat> but when you look back at it, you realize he had no intention of starting a profitable company. It was so he could pay himself a salary as a corporate executive. Drive This is when uh, SUVs were very popular. Drive SUVs. He was like totally, oh, he was living the baller lifestyle, bro. <clears throat> Until the money, other people's money ran out. Uh, but that was the dot com. Now, I don't know, dot com version 2.0. All these idiot Silicon Valley people who maybe were mercenary enough to know right off the bat, well, I ain't going to, this, this ain't got no way to get money. <clears throat> but right now, there's billions of dollars of venture capital funds. And if I could pay myself a $1.5 million 
salary as the CEO and get my buddies in at a million a piece. And we, we, we keep this racket up for five years. We can walk away. Even if the company fails, we walk away. That is certainly a plan. At least I tip my hat to that. That's a little, that's at least strategic or there's some intelligence behind it. But certainly there were some Silicon Valley dude bros, <clears throat> the venture capitalist people who don't use their own money, by the way. Uh, they close deals, bro, and they get a commission on the sales or the dollar amount, bro. Uh, bankers are very common. You'd have a banker be at a bank for three years. Well, all the loans he made were for five to 10 years or 30 years, and he'd be gone, and then the deadbeat scumbags he lent to would stop paying the loan, and you can't go fire him because he already left. <clears throat> so... You had the dot-com people in the 90s LARPing. You had the bankers LARPing. You had the real estate guys LARPing. Now you got Silicon Valley LARPing. Perhaps, uh, you know, yeah, there's real estate's a little bubbly as well. I'm sure there's some real estate bros. I'm sure there's, uh, what is it, the um, subprime car market. I'm sure there's some car lender, like broker, that's made a lot of money. Um, <clears throat> they're all LARPing. But let me expand your vision a little bit so you can see how this goes. That explains why we're going to have bank crisis after bank crisis after bank crisis. What industry it in is in, who knows? Maybe it'll be real estate next. Well, who knows? <clears throat> but both the banking system, the finance bros, and whatever the hot industry is that decade, you're going to have a bunch of ass wipes come in. They're talentless hacks. And, oh, oh, bro. and then it'll collapse. <clears throat> Let me expand your mind a little bit. What about the student loan bailout? That any different? All right. What you see, two-thirds of young Americans go to college. Now we're talking everybody. And what is college? Well, last time I looked at the National Center for Education statistics, about 85% of the degrees conferred were completely worthless. They were jokes of degrees. I'm not going to go into why that is. <clears throat> but the consequence, the ramification, 5, 10, 15 years later, now you got 30 and 40-year-olds asking for a student loan bailout. Well, wait a minute. What, what was the point of you going to college and being an intellectual? You failed at that one job. Why don't you have a job? Why aren't you a good whatever journalism, sociology, or sociologist, whatever else have you? <clears throat> and what you're going to start to find out, and it's very clear and obvious with college students, especially those that demand a student loan bailout, is that they never had any intention of actually working a real job. They just wanted to play and LARP as make believe, and especially in college and the liberal arts, the social science majors. Captain Planet, they're going to save the world. What you're really doing is avoiding math and calculus. You're also an egomaniac thinking you have a master's degree in sociology, and that makes you somehow smart, aside from just the fact you're a parasite. You need constant government money to bail. And you need an outright bailout, strong, independent women. Oh, but I need a bailout. I <clears throat> when you look at every American, we've had it so easy for so long. We're such a bunch of spoiled little quantahas, we actually think that real work is beneath us and that we are entitled, even it requires us to steal money, that's what it is, steal money <clears throat> and play and LARP as some more grandiose person in our, in our head than we ever have the work ethic or capability or intelligence of ever becoming. And we have no qualms of bailing it out. Matter of fact, we'll go to great lengths to come up with delusional uh, mental acrobatic rationalizations as to why my favorite about the student loan bailouts. <clears throat> if we get a student loan bailout, we can start finally start starting businesses and buying houses and starting families. Like, dude, if you can't pay your student loans back, you are too stupid to start a business, start a family, uh, whatever, whatever other thing you listed that requires work ethic and responsibility. <clears throat> and even to this day, when they are beggars, they are white collar panhandlers. Look, like, I need a bailout. Hey, maybe you shouldn't vote. Maybe you should have, you should shut up. Maybe you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, no, still egotistical as the day is long. Just like, oh, I, I actually care about whatever the correct leftist cause is. 
And you're bad because you, whatever stupid rationalization, parasites, and academia came up with. And so you see this. I don't know. Did you all watch too much Captain Planet? <clears throat> oh, I'm going to hurt some people's feelings here now. Did you all watch too much Power Rangers? <laughs> Man, that's a creepy show. Uh, I know. I got I got some millennials in there. I hear your childhood uh, feelings. I know. It was. It, I just like, that's creepy. I don't want to watch that. I was in college. I watched Batman and Beyond. Or Batman and Beyond and uh, Batman. The original Batman. Those, those were, that was outstanding. Pinnacle of American animation right there. Maybe not the artwork, but certainly the, the product. <clears throat> Uh, I think a lot of people watch too many, too much American television. Oh, and did your teachers blow a bunch of dirt up your shoots? You're all brave and amazing and good to say, oh God, teachers right there. A lot of, a lot of the reason you got this problem is, is you, you know, well, look at the, the, the gal that's the poster child for this. Now she followed the, the K through college uh leftist marxist woke indoctrination oh she's gay sure you are sweetheart sure right oh i'm gonna i'm gonna hey why don't you check the risk portfolio of that freaking bank no she was too too busy oh look i'm a minority female <gasps> and guess what i'm the gays oh yes that's so important when you're managing a portfolio of 200 billion dollars of other people's money <clears throat> guarantee you she doesn't care that there's going to be a bailout. She got her. She doesn't care. But there you see that it, 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 at least the, the do bros in the housing bubble, they just want to be egotistical ballers. Now these people want to be Jessica and Jason Christ. They want to save the world. Ooh, look at me. <clears throat> and notice also if you promote whatever uh, trait you happen to be with minority disadvantaged trait, doesn't require any math. I'm for the lesbians. Well, good for you. Who's against them? <laughs> I'm for. I'm against childhood hunger. So you didn't. Just you're saying you didn't have to learn calculus to to take that that brave and courageous stance. Because I am actually against. I am for childhood hunger. Yes. All those people you got to fight against that are against the whales. But that mentality is way more universal. And what you're starting to realize with the government, it, it's giving its blessing to this LARPing. And what it ultimately ends up becoming is our economy is a big adult care center, a big adult playground where you can go and do whatever you want to masturbate your ego. To imagine yourself a baller, a corporate executive, some kind of entrepreneur. Some kind of social justice warrior, realtor mogul, whatever it is. And if you fail, that's all right. The taxpayer will bail you out. And that's our economy. Broadening it further. You can't broaden it any further. You can't. It's broader than a big broad on Broadway. You can't make it any broader. Check this out. <clears throat> They've been doing this for years in Europe. Where... The government, it depends. Italy, France, it, it depends on the decade and the year and the time and the era. <clears throat> but it is very common, and not just Europe, but developing countries, which is what Europe is. <laughs> ah, shut up. Credit Suisse is going down. Shut the F up. They've been doing that for how many times has Ferrari been bailed out? So Italians could make believe they make a good car. No. Well, okay. Yeah, you made a good car, but you didn't make it profitable. So you failed. I don't know any any bank that took a bailout. I think Goldman Sachs. Who, I don't care the most prestigious. I don't know if Goldman took one or not, but it, I, I'm, I'm probably. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. But all the you bankers that took bailouts, that proved you were not good bankers. <clears throat> Your company should have shut down all the equity, all the profit that had been built up and amassed by that company in a matter of mm, five to six years. You blew it all away. You failed. You should that industry should be completely wiped off the face of the planet. But the government comes in <clears throat> for political reasons and you bail out these different industries. Didn't we bail out GM and Chrysler too? Go look. The 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 governments will take over the airlines or bail out the airlines. Then I, I have to ask, okay, so then you aren't real responsible adults running a successful airline. What you are is incompetent adult children. 
playing make-believe in the adult playground of what is, more accurately, the Western economy, where privileged, stuck-up ass wipes get to make-believe they're actually real. You know, how smug did those people at SVB and now Credit Suisse, they, they, all the people that got bailed out in the financial crisis and the executives of Silica, oh, they had their champagne. And you remember those videos? Some insufferable pain in the ass girl. Today is a day for me working at whatever, Twitter, Google, Facebook. Now I got some biscotti and now I'm going to get some oregano tea. Now And now I'm going to go get my toenails done. They thought they were so freaking cool LARPing. But that's, we, we, <clears throat> meaning as a democratically elected government we put in, decided we're going to bail it out. And that's the real Western GDP. Western GDP, Western economy's GDP is basically do whatever you want, play make-believe, and the government will bail you out if you can't keep it together. That's it. And by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, usually if people go and do whatever they want without a work ethic, they're not that good. Exhibit A, Hollywood, have you noticed how their movies are just absolute crap? They don't have to make a profit. They'll get venture capital. They go through equity. Disney's got money. <clears throat> I still wonder, did they not subsidize? Did Disney not like buy fake tickets for Captain Marvel? I want to see how the Marvels, the, the sequels, could it do. Let's see it. After a while, you will run out of money, <clears throat> but you could just see it. People with no skill, no work ethic, no ambition, no talent, no intelligence keep running these either industries completely into the ground or the product is crap. Absolute crap. But going, God, 50, 60, 70 years ago, Europe's been doing it a long time. Oh, this industry is failing. Subsidize it. This 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 company is it's too big to fill. Take it over, nationalize it. Now privatize it again. Now nationalize it again. Who that just whatever political party is in charge at that moment in time. And then finally, oh, he can't get any more broad. Whoa, I'm gonna get broader than a gal in Walmart on a rascal. Here's how broad we're gonna get. <clears throat> what the hell is bankruptcy then? Hey, and here, this has nothing to do with politics. Okay, fine. Leftists imagine, oh, I'm a gay, trans, bi, lesbian, quadriplegic, bulbasaur, sexual. Good for you, sweetheart, sir, whatever. But your rank and file American, right? They, they live on debt. They LARP. There is so few legitimately financially stable, honest people that present themselves as they are. But everybody uses debt. Everyone, you everyone's got a nicer car than me. You know, I'm, I'm like, well, okay, I know I got more than you do, Miss 22 year old with student loan debt, but a brand new Honda, those aren't cheap. I, I, I don't obviously, I don't afford very nice clothes. I go to Goodwill, but some of the places I go to where they're a little bit higher end, I know I can just smell them. I can just smell them where I'm like, you guys don't have money. I know you don't have money, you're faking it. You're talking way too loud to actually have money. <clears throat> and everyone going to the nightclubs, putting things on credit card debt and this and that and that and this and the whole concept of bankruptcy. You're not really getting bailed out. You just took all the money from the lenders, whether it's a credit card or a bank. How is that not LARPing a lifestyle that you could not actually afford? And we're all okay. Well, it's, it's forgivable in bankruptcy. Failed human beings, LARPing as upper middle income uh, suburbanite people. That's where you see it. That's where you see it. Um, that's LARPing too. Oh my God. Did I see it in one of these suburbs? Holy cow. I've talked about it before, but everyone parks their car in the driveway, even though it's a perfectly good two or three car garage right there. Why? One, so they can brag to everybody about the boats and the RAVs and the, the car they just got. Two, the wife has too much crap and the husband has too much crap that the garage is filled with crap. And you can't park it in there. Everyone in Western civilization is an adult child imagining and LARPing as someone they are not. <laughs> someone better than they can ever actually become. 
imagining they're the Barbie. You know, I got my little nieces. <clears throat> they play Barbie, right? Hell, I think they're more intellectually honest about it. I don't think they actually think they're the princesses in the castle. I don't think they're Barbie. Some harrowing adventures Barbie has had. She got kidnapped by Ken, but then Batman saved them. You guys all know about that. They had Batman. <laughs> so why is Barbie tied up? Oh, Ken tied her up. I'm like, oh, that kind of relationship. Whoa. <laughs> Kid's a little young for that. But don't worry, Batman's going to save her. Like, oh, okay. All right, good. I'm more more mature and adult than all you dumbass American and Westerners like LARPing as big ballers, bro. And when you see from top down, uh, everyone who's fine for bankruptcy or living off of debt posing as if it's still middle school, as if it's still high school, that's why you have this banking crisis. That's why the banks are shutting down. That's why Silicon Valley is like, oh my God, loans that aren't that aren't one and a half percent, oh, loans that are actually the rate of inflation, but but our our profit. We say the profit model is a cash flow model, but how will we keep faking it and acting? What we we expected to achieve profitability in twenty fifty seven. We needed you to keep a man. I never understood, and to this day, I still don't understand. We're going for our third round of debt financing. What? What? Well, you just don't understand. Uh, yeah, yeah, I understand just fine. I'm not the one asking for the government bailout. But that's why this is happening. That's why it's going to continue to happen. As we keep raising a bunch of egomaniacs, and that's basically what Westerners are, <clears throat> And with especially teachers right there, because, you know, we don't want to raise our kids or anything. Oh, my God. Thank God. Daycare. I mean, the public schools here. Take my kid. You give it to these truly moronic, idiotic people called teachers who have no real world working experience. Just read them from the reading rainbow. You're going to do great. Da, 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 celebrate. You're going to make six figures. Whatever the song is, the teachers tell these kids. Tell them, oh, yeah, you're brave and amazing if you're LGBTQ and here's, you know, here's, here's your prodigy. Oh, wait, <laughs> embezzlement? What? Uh, you feed them, you, you lie to them essentially about what they're capable of, what they deserve, what they're entitled to. You send them out. Oh, and the banks are only more than happy to lend and facilitate this delusion. And then, oh, well, what if they don't pay us back? Let's okay, government bail us out. So kind of F you to everybody. That's why Cappy's a misanthrope. This is why I have, God, I hate you guys. This is why if you just, if you're a tradesman who's like sober and shows up on time and actually do, does your job, you know, like all three of you in the United States, I'm going to salute, you know, I'm going to salute the Mexican roofers. You guys actually do your job <clears throat> and, and the groundskeepers. You get salute you guys. You guys actually do the job. You actually support the family and you're not LARPing as one of these wannabe executive MBA, social justice warrior, DEI freaking moron. Yeah, I, I like the waitress who just works late and serves me my coffee. I like the bartenders. I like the Uber driver. Those at least aren't LARPers. Although who knows, maybe they go and borrow all the money. Like, look, I got a brand new car. But that's why it's going to continue on. And until you stop Paying people to be make-believe adult children, imagining the world that they're actually doing something, this will continue on because especially the way we raise kids today, Americans' egos and Westerners' egos is just, it's just too powerful, too strong. And so <clears throat> whatever the next bubble will be, bankers will be on it. People will play make-believe and LARP. And here we'll be again where, oh, we just print off more money. Why is everything so expensive? Don't worry. We got a diversity and inclusion major over here. They'll build the, the desalinization plant and the nuclear power plant to build it to make sure Lake Mead doesn't run out of water. Don't worry. They have a master's degree in diversity and inclusion. We don't need any of those tradesmen or engineers. So there you go. There's my insight. So the next time this happens, you don't have to watch the talking, oh, deep analysis with people at CNBC. What do you think, Bobby? <laughs> yeah, you say that's the interest rates, and they didn't, they didn't match the maturity of their portfolio with what they lent out at. <laughs> yeah, it's just 
adult children. There, short answer. Now, link below <clears throat> is a link to my very first book that I wrote 15 years ago, predicting the housing bubble. It's called Behind the Housing Crash. It's not the exact same that's happening now, but it rhymes a lot. So if you want to figure out what's going on, take a look at that book. I'm very proud of it. First one, of course, they don't sell the best, but take a look at it. Behind the Housing Crash, link below. I will also link below to my minimalism course because I don't know if you noticed this, but people buy more crap than they can afford on credit and debt. It's kind of the one problem we keep finding ourselves in. And if you'd like to not be one of these truly uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> the, the genuine stuff, the mentally retarded, like your, your, your mental development has slowed down and that's what they are. The mental, it's stalled. No, arrested development. That's the, they're, they've been arrestedly developed in middle school and they still think it's like, Ooh, be popular by thing. If, if you don't want to live this lifestyle, you just want to be happy and relax. I have my minimalism course. Um, eh, maybe I'll open that up. I'll open that up. I'll link to it down below and you can take it if you want. So there you go. There's my accurate, not really hot, just accurate take on it. <clears throat> and really, you see any of these LARPers, kick them in the nuts. Well, don't kick them in the nuts. You go to jail. But I mean, don't hang out with these people. Anyone who needs a bailout files for bankruptcy. I don't care if it's a multi-billion dollar bailout, a credit suite for uh, first Boston. I don't care if it's your neighbor filed for bankruptcy and they drive a BMW. Don't, don't have anything to do with these people. All right, let's go to the Super Chats, if we got any. Scrolling. Oh, TFM went on a rant. Good, good. I'd like to tune into TFM, see what he has to say. Yeah, so I, and I'm, I'm not going to go into the details. As, oh, well, what did they do specifically? Everyone's a douchebag and a LARPer and an adult child. There, I, there it is. That's why. Scrolling. <clears throat> All right. Let's go down here for your kind donations. Today, donations will go to buy irrigation piping. Nick Corkadilus, two euros, really underrated stream, just the common sense. I go get my, okay, Nick, go get my book, Curse of the High IQ, because if you tune in here, you got to understand, I don't speak to the normies, I don't speak to the commoners. I don't speak to people who go get liberal arts degrees and social science degrees. I talk to like the top 10% of intelligence. Go get Curse of the High IQ. <clears throat> uh, Bobby Bobberton, <laughs> five bucks. Do you think I could retire in Thailand solely off of maximizing my Roth IRA every year from now? 31 years old, 62, I make 40, live off of 20. Oh, with 30 years of growth? Yeah, assuming the stock market continues as historical returns. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, Bobby, just so you know, there's a ton of um, retirement calculators uh, you could do online and just plug in some pretty simple key data and it'll, it'll give you some pretty accurate numbers that you can at least ballpark what your monthly savings needs to be. So poke around on that. <clears throat> I mean, if you need additional help, I talk about it. I got an upcoming course on Teachable called The Dad You Never Had, and there's a finance section in there, and I actually talk about some specific ones. It's a pricey uh, course, though. It's going to be $149, uh, but that'll be out later on this, uh, this month. Big Shell 007, five bucks. What's more important to Cappy? Content of character or genitalia size <laughs> can't go two or three videos without him mentioning genitalia or it's, it's, it's not my big shelf 007 that's not me that's these stupid dumbass americans and europeans and westerners who are just so obsessed about skin color and trait and whose genitalia you like to lick i couldn't care less i just couldn't care less i don't care i mean go be gay that's fine but they just celebrate it all like, oh, my God, I'm transitioning. Okay, good for you. I'm not against it. You need to worship me and hear about it all the time. No, no, I actually don't. I do not owe you fealty. I will just acknowledge you are a fellow human being with all the accorded rights and privileges of a U.S. citizen. But I am not kissing the ring. Homie, don't play that. No one's going to get that one. <clears throat> Really think about that big shell. All Americans talk about is their traits. That's it. Not what they did. Oh my God. So I think today I'm pansexual. Shut up. 
Our future MD1, five bucks. Hey, Cap, are you, are us programmers F? No, no, they're going to, they're going to need programmers. Programming is hard. It's boring. Oh, it's boring. Can I learn about early childhood development and take care of other women's children while they ship them out to daycare? And then they go work their social service jobs, taking care of other women's children. I don't like calculus. Yeah, you're going to be fine on programming. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a hit in Silicon Valley. I don't know how deep that recession is going to go for Silicon Valley. Um, but yeah, programming, it's, it's, I'd rather have that in a journalism degree. Harrelson Blackwood for 20 kind, generous dollars. You bleep. Explain to us the relationship you would have as the city rep with an organized crime. With organized crime. Explain to us. The relationship you would have as the city rep with organized crime in your country. See, if I was the city rep <clears throat> with organized crime, to be perfectly honest, I would probably bring the organized crime. We come to an agreement because I think organized crime, if you're talking like mafia style, the mafia actually does serve some purpose and, and uh, public service functions, actually. Um, I mean, now if they're killing people and robbing people, I, hey, hey, hey. We're building a lot of new prisons, getting a lot of new cops. Bring them in. But um, I don't know. It, it, it would depend on the situation. Uh, Lawn Dart, five bucks. Hey, Cappy, how can the FDIC reimburse SVB depositors in whole without passing on the taxpayer when the cap on the FDIC insurance is 250K? Uh, they have, uh, last I checked, again, I don't know the details of this because I don't care. I literally don't care. They made all the banks contribute to a bailout fund. Lord knows they'll probably be tapped dry. They probably didn't contribute enough. And so I think they're tapping that as opposed to the FDIC, uh, uh, the taxpayer. But yes, absent that bailout fund that the bank should have funded, um, yeah, they're going to have to go to the taxpayers, either through taxation or inflation, one of the two. Wiz Division Productions, 20 generous dollars. Big bro cappy. How do you handle being a misanthrope and enjoying the company of others? I choose people incredibly wisely. I don't have a lot of friends. <clears throat> I have very few friends. It's not because I'm antisocial or I'm a douche. It's just most people are pretty worthless and uh, a pain in the ass to deal with. So, you know, like there's Atham and Chad. And uh, <laughs> there's, there's the tornado chasing kid. There's my hiking buddy here and uh vegas you know kind of the rule zero guys but i just i just don't hang out with most people uh and i'm starting to get to the i'm evolving uh where i kind of like being alone now where i don't tolerate conversation at my cigar lounge like hey blah, 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 what's going on the guys just being friendly nothing wrong with it but i don't want to talk to them because i'm like no you're not you're not saying anything intelligent that i want to talk about um but I also want to avoid complete social ineptitude. Is the universe telling me to embrace my inner nomad? Yes. Look, you're going to make friends, you know, <clears throat> whether you're looking for them or not. Uh, you are going to run into some people that are good people and they're going to be good friends. And then they're going to go away because life pulls people different directions. And I think people will lose the will to live. Uh, that's the number one killer. Uh, but for the most part, most people are not worth being friends with. Most people really, I mean, oh, geez, Bipsy, tell me more about your political science degree and how the, wait, wait, <clears throat> I, I'm going out on a limb here, Tina. But with your degree in political science, is your solution to the problem other people's money? Let me, am I, am I anywhere near the ballpark on that? Oh my God, you're so predictable like a robot. Let me hang out with you. <clears throat> so yeah, um, man, life is too short for stupid people. Life is just too short. Go, go, no man, go hike. I throw on the podcast. I got my digital friends. I listen to the Great One. I listen to TFM. I listen to um, <clears throat> Critical Drinker. I listen to It's a Gundam. I mean, I don't know these people personally. Some of them I do, but I don't know most. Of it. But it's just, it's more pleasant than. Dude, how about the Milwaukee Bucks, bro? Hey, how about you hop in your lease vehicle and get the F out of my face? You're as exciting as sheetrock. 
Oh, did the guy throw the sphere through the hoop real good? Oh, yeah, you see that? Wasn't, it wasn't like that happened literally a million times before in thousands of games. Bob, two bucks, thinking about putting money in UFB. Their APY is 5%. I don't even know what UFB is. Wiz Division Productions, five bucks. Power Ranger, I knew it. I know it. Here we go. Power Rangers was whack. I was always more of an X-Men 97 TV series. Yeah. You remember Gargoyles? Were you were you old enough? You must be old enough for Gargoyles. And that was a pretty good show before I headed off to college. That was a good one. <clears throat> Evan, six Canadian bucks. You don't need to mention calculus. These people thought it was wise to use 10-year duration bonds to satisfy the short-term liquidity needs. I know. <laughs> Chief executive of risk management. I like licking hoo-ha. I wish I had all my rejection letters from all you losers in the finance industry. I wish I had. Hey, by the way, <clears throat> by the way, you could go to my Instagram page to check. Oh, I've got to get that loser. Oh, he's slamming on me. Hey, dude, bro, why don't you go to my Instagram page and look at all the hikes I've done and the motorcycle rides while you were stuck at freaking work? It's downtown office, bro. Good. Have fun. Enjoy stepping over the crap, too, in these major leftist crap holes. <clears throat> Jones, 10 bucks. Oh, by the way, guys, if you kindly would subscribe to my channel, I almost got 500 in me here right now. I am at like 99,000. Another thousand, I get the plastic trinket trophy that YouTube gives me. And then I don't care how many more subscribers I get after that. I would appreciate it if you all kindly would subscribe. Uh, James asked for 10 bucks. All those innovative cutting edge tech companies that had deposits at SVB didn't even do basic treasury management to minimize the risk of uninsured deposits. Pathetic. Dude, bro, James, bro, you don't understand. I'm more of an idea guy. And like, I don't have time for the minutia of accounting and financial management. <laughs> I, I just love it. Also, nepotism and cronyism in, is rife in the United States where you hire your friends and not the best candidate. So they always hire some, some douchebag that they got their MBA with over, I don't know what's a really crappy business school, the Carlson school of management, right? Like some low rank school. No one's heard of it cause it's crappy and like, Oh yeah, man. Well, what? And they know it. Like, what do you mean? Accounting controls. And I guess Pete Marwa, KMPG, I guess they're under a little bit of fire now because they gave him a clean SVB, a clean bill of health. Why do you people learn it? Like, do you not? There used to be the big six and now there's the big four. I wonder if it's going to be down to the big three. I wonder if Vlad Elkums has an opinion on that. <clears throat> Alex Patino, our truck driving Latino agent in the field who is working hard, a real job to work up the tax paying money to bail out all these banks. Oregon OT. I thought it was smokable. Pretend it's the pot. No, I don't. I just pulled that out of my ass. I, I don't, I don't think there's a Reagan OT. I'm, you know, the type that, well, it's got a Reagan OT and I'm going to get a biscotti. I'm going to sleep on the hammock. Oh, there's Tanner. He's a funny guy. He's zany. Oh, he's always, he's the jokester in the, when do you work? <clears throat> hand clogs five bucks cap can you do a schoolhouse rock on what and who the federal reserve is does anyone own it i think they already did do something like that i could be wrong um but no i don't have the skills i i, I don't have the. i'm really trying to finish off that dad you never had course i'm really trying to finish that off so i could be done with it because the weather is slowly getting nice here in vegas Where's Division Productions? Two bucks. They're all do bros until, um, where's the food? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Can't wait to see what MBAs are going to do when there ain't no food. <clears throat> I'm more of the idea guy. Shishink, pow. You, you ain't, you uh, one less mouth to feed now. You one less mouth to feed. Here's a shovel. Dig a trench. But I, I'm more of a management. Here's a shovel. Dig a trench or else. I am management. Look at me. Look at me. I am management now. <clears throat> Nonstop trade, two bucks. Carlson School of Management approves of this message. <laughs> oh. Well, even the Ivy League is worthless now. I'm, I'm sure all these top executive types are all Ivy League. Ass bucket, two bucks. Look at the travel biz needing a bailout in 2020. Right, right. But now I will say that when the government shut everything down because of a cold, 
a very bad cold, I admit. When we're shutting it all down. Uh, okay. That and the um the movie industry, I can get that. Lawn dart, five bucks. The tech dudes can have the degrees from MIT and Caltech, but don't realize putting 50 million in one bank is absolutely idiotic. Dude, bro. What they're not dude bros. They're they're too nerdy to be dude bros. What I liked about um the movie uh Operation Fortune is they portray the um, Silicon Valley billionaires as the absolute spineless soy boy, soft, squishy putzes that they are. <clears throat> the Pillsbury Doughboy. Ass bucket, two bucks. Minnesota Senate now passed free school lunches for all. Good. I'm not there. I'm sure that will solve the problem. They just need more of other people's money. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure there will be no more buildings burnt down in Minnesota now. I'm sure of it. Nonstop Drake, two bucks. Cappy is 1,100 subs away from, from interview. Carlson Dean. I'm not going to interview the Carlson Dean. There'd be no reason. Hey, you run a shoddy organization, but all business schools are kind of shoddy. And uh, there's an education bubble, but you make your money that way. So you're going to tell me why education is still really important, aren't you? Okay, thanks for the propaganda. <clears throat> Wholesome DJ Aftershock, five bucks. Dude, bro, I'm investing my buddy's tech startup, bro. He's kind of an idea guy. Know what I'm saying? I'm going to be making, I'm going to make managing director by year end. <laughs> Dung is fun. 10 bucks. Man, look at all these super chats. Thanks, guys. 10 bucks. I finally see banks are flawed. Oh, they've been flawed forever. I'm a taxpayer. I'm going to pay for all this. So how many loans from different banks and different states can I get? Bankruptcy affect your credit score. What do I care? Your bankruptcy, um, I think it's off your record or no longer affects your credit score um, uh, after seven years. But you're not wrong. The lodge is like, like look, okay, you guys keep are going to get, you're going to get bailouts. You're all going to LARP. Well, I'm going to LARP. I'm going to go borrow a ton of money that's, you know, for now, keep in mind, <clears throat> they can renege on your, your liabilities going away in bankruptcy court if you do it on purpose. So it's not exactly the most clever of ideas, but ethically in terms of principles, yeah, why the hell not? Rack up a ton of credit card bills, not pit, nah, too bad, it's unsecured debt, F off. No, oh, my house is in a trust, too bad. Sam Whiskey. Two bucks. The circus just ran out of bread. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And amen. Hanton Clogs, five bucks. Did you hear about the... They got accused of... Oh, about... What's the... The... MP? They got accused of forcible bedroom, not fun time. <clears throat> but men should still get married, right? Now, I I don't know which one you're talking about. Email it to me. I'm I'm still. I did a video last night on <laughs> Tiger Woods. His ex girlfriend sued for thirty million. <laughs> you can get sued for dating someone now. I guess you don't have to be married. Oh, pew pew pew! Our Indonesian agent in the field for fifty thousand Indonesian rupiah, and you all think I'm rich now, but it's like six ten thousandths. Of a penny per rupiah. What is that? Like uh, five bucks? Uh, took your Achieving Financial Excellence course last year. Thank you for your work. Here's some deposit for you. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's the other course. That one's always open. If you guys want like just an intro course to financial planning, um, <clears throat> take that Achieving Financial Excellence course available on Teachable. Wiz Division Productions, five bucks. People telling me they own item XYZ while paying minimum payments on finance item XYZ. Remember the video we did where you now you can finance Air Jordans? In addition to phones and rims, uh, always makes me laugh. Adult debt ridden children. Yeah, they are. They, ladies, you're all, for those of you looking for a wealthy man, you're almost better off going for a guy who has no nice things. I. It was so rare to find a, a genuinely, okay, let me tell you this. I've never seen a genuinely rich man with a fancy car. Uh, maybe I have, I didn't know it, but in banking, all the rich guys did not drive fancy cars. All the debt bros, there's a new term, debt bros. Instead of dude bros, they're debt bros. <clears throat> they all had lease vehicles. They all they had they were insolvent. Nonstop trade, two bucks. Cappy's dad course promo code 69% off two ahead of time. <laughs> 
Uh, Dave Ramsey, he was. He was. That's why um, <clears throat> he does good work now. And I respect him. And there's nothing. I like his products. I recommend his courses and his books to my audience and clients. But if I ever hear any guff, like, out comes the dude bro car. Like, hey, dude bro, how was it flipping houses, bro? I don't think it was. Was it real estate? Was it? You found Jesus after that, eh? Oh, imagine that. Okay. All right. Did you know, man, two Canadian bucks, what will your plan be outside USA must have? Well, land and enough money in the that local currency so I can live for, I don't know, two, three years so I could find a job and support myself. That's kind of that's kind of it. Like just simple lodging, literally a hut. You know, a toilet, a shower, kind of a mother-in-law, kind of hut bedroom kind of thing. That's all I need. Uh, Generation Apollo, five bucks. My grandpa once said, people are so dumb, they'll buy liberal bag, literal bags of dog crap if you figure out how to market it to them in the right way. Well, bags of dog crap can deter people. I just don't understand y'all spending on average $50,000 on a car, which you don't spend $50,000 on a car with the mortgage and the interest rate on your car loan. That's more like $70,000 on a car. I paid $4,500 for mine. The current one I'm using now. But it's got it's got dents in it, bro. Oh, oh, oh. I like this so. Guys, let me tell you something. <clears throat> you get older, right? You think you left middle school and high school. There are still people like, literally, like, it's, it's rarer now, but people my age, maybe more in my 30s, like, oh my God, why do you got that car, man? Oh, look at this guy over here. I'm like, is it 1988 still? Is it night? Do I got to wear my Cavarishi pants to be cool to you? Where's Division Productions? Five bucks. Barrett D2, don't buy his books. Rent them from the. Oh, Where's Division Production, you horrible person. <laughs> don't buy his books. Rent them from the library. <laughs> Cappy loves when his books are rented from the library and hates when you buy them. No. I have gone, <clears throat> I've like filed complaints against my own book. Oh, that's a sexist, racist book. You shouldn't have it in the library. Oh, <laughs> uh, there was one time, I think it was Bachelor Pad Economics. It, it might even be still on the internet. Um, a librarian says, I'm never going to have it. And I'm like, yes, good. I don't want it here. You guys don't want to go to the library. That's just where homeless people poop. Okay. That's where homeless people poop. Oh. <clears throat> Uh, Burb Sheed, five Australian dollars. Corporate world and government in Australia has now stopped talking about equality and moved on to equity. Right. Well, that's that's the new thing. Fine. <clears throat> They're going to LARP. I hope that equity really incentivizes all the talented and skilled people in any country to do their best to produce the things that we all need. Where's the food? Nonstop trade, two bucks. Happy woman history to the life coach, Aaron Celery. Thank you, Dre. Keep on going. Hey, Channel 1800 Dumb is in the house. What's up, man? Say hi to your sister. <clears throat> Manuel M, two bucks. He has nothing to say. He just gave two bucks. Thank you, Manuel. Hand clogs, two bucks. Chad in the house. Oh, is, is Velcom's in the house? Uh, Chad, I'd love to um, have your take on KMPG's involvement here if they failed or whatever. It's It's coming out just now. I don't know if you've been busy with tax season to pay attention. Uh, facts preacher 499. The goal of leftist cities are to live like you are impoverished, get as much money as possible, get a lot of easy women, and move to somewhere cheap. The goal of leftist cities are to live like you are impoverished. Oh, yeah. When you're living in a leftist city, yeah. Make your money at Silicon Valley, Wall Street, bang a bunch of gals and get the F out and go live in Oklahoma or something. Ass bucket, two bucks. Jim Cramer was just pumping SVB stock and signature. <laughs> I can't fault him. He's more entertainment. Um, and net, let's go easy on Jim Cramer because he got a ton of people involved in investing. Well, at least they started saving for retirement because of Jim Cramer. I know he can't bat a thousand guys. He can't. <clears throat> hey, the, oh, the goddamn bacon who you all should tune into for 308. Almost 200,000. Congratulations, man. Wait, I haven't won yet. 
People keep sending me congratulations. I'm not at 100,000. Everyone go subscribe to the channel, please. <clears throat> I Then I won't waste. Think about this. If you guys subscribe to the channel now, I can spend all that extra time. I talk about subscribing to the channel about how douchey banksters are. Manuel, five bucks in cap, did some recon in Idaho, Montana, and South Dakota area last week. Tried Perkins and checked out Bucky's. Thanks for the sage advice. Where's the Bucky's out there? Were you down south and you checked out a Bucky's? I hope you like snow. Those are cold places, man. Those are cold places. Oh, I guess you're there in March, so it is kind of cold. <clears throat> Nonstop trade, two bucks. Do you get hate mail from the Carlson School staff? No, they just block me on Twitter. I don't, I don't have time to go full assault on them. Um, I, when I get some downtime, I'll just remind people not to go there. I'd like to cost them as much as they've cost me in my life. Wasted to four years. Uh, really no job prospects. Um, although a lot of that is not even necessarily Carlson's fault. A lot of that is Minnesota culture where, no, do you play hockey together? No, I'm – oh, God. Guys, if you're in Wisconsin or Iowa – any state that has reciprocity with Minnesota, don't go to Minnesota. There are no jobs. I mean, get your degree there, but then go back to your home state. Where's Division Productions? Two bucks. Do you have a P.O. box for fans to send stuff? Uh, I do, but uh, why don't you email me? <clears throat> I don't normally give it out. Lawn Dart, two bucks. How has life been in South Dakota since your move? Uh, it was busy because I had to build the house or build it out, you know, like, Edge shelving put on handles because tradesmen are so responsible and sober. Um, but then there's things like a lot of dumps, you know, getting shelving for the garage, uh, assembling furniture. Artwork was huge because I've always lived in a one bedroom since I was 18, more or less. And also I got like, it's not even a big house, it's just a house, but there's way more wall space now. And now I'm like, oh, I need art. So I'm going through all the pictures I've had in my life, kind of blowing them up and, and putting them up on the um, on the walls. But that takes time um, and precise measurement. Like, okay, we're going to print it on this canvas screen. It's got to be this dots per inch and all that other jazz. Um, but it's been fun. It's been fine. It's been South Dakota. I got some hiking in, fossil hunting, motorcycle riding. It's I'm in heaven. Nonstop trade, two bucks, but Tiger Woods just didn't maintain alpha frame. Just kidding. He did. I don't know. Man, that was one ugly girl. I mean, I, what? Tiger, what? Come on, man. What? You're Tiger Woods. <clears throat> Dung is fun, two bucks. My super chat is financed by taxpayers. Have fun, y'all. Thank you, Dung is fun. Aaron Blue. Aaron Blue is an amazing man, a good man, a, a, a virtuous man, probably one of the best men alive, and it has nothing to do with the $50 he just gave me. That just shows you what a great man he is. Uh, have you say, seen or watched any of Peter Zeehan? He makes a lot of predictions on geopolitics and economics. One thing he predicts is going to happen is the fall of China and deglobalization. I'm aware of him. I watched one of his speeches. I wasn't impressed, but in a full intellectual honesty and disclosure, I have not watched enough of him to know fully what his theories and philosophies are to form an opinion of him. It's just the one speech I listened to. I'm like, okay, well, that was kind of not germane to the topic, but eh, I, um, Thus far, I am not impressed, but I have not ruled him out either. Evan, six Canadian bucks. Did you hear that SVB's head of operations was the CFO of Lehman Brothers? Yes. Yeah, I, they just, they just, it's an incestuous little pool. They switch people out. Barney Frank was in charge of the Frank Dodd Act. Um, he was in charge of, or had a role in management at uh, Signature Bank, which is interesting. Uh, from when Lehman collapsed, these people are just fail upwards. Yep. Yep. Um, Chris Priv, two bucks. Say hi to Chad. I will. Where is Chad though? Is Chad Elkins in the, the room? Jordan Wook, walk tall two bucks. Uh, S J I M is the new short Jim Cray Kramer ETF. Oh, is that what he recommends shorting? Uh, is that the ticker symbol then? Cabragoon, Cabulous, two bucks just saying hi. How you doing, Cabulous? Nons, goofy videos, two bucks. I'm going to subscribe twice. I appreciate that. However, that's just like voting Democrat. Uh, SJ, two Canadian bucks, Jim Crater, a Kramer, sell all your Bitcoin. Did he say that? 
Palm tree, 20. Man, look at you guys. Palm tree, 325, 20 bucks. Almost at 100,000, Cappy. Thank you, palm tree. Where are you there? It looks like you're hiking in the winter. <clears throat> Losing my voice here. I still have like two more chapters to record on the course. Are we caught up? I think we're caught up. We are all caught up. Okay, so link below is uh, my book, Behind the Housing Crash. I will also have a link down below to Achieving uh, Minimalism Theory and Practice. That will be available on Teachable once I open it up. So give me like an hour or two. That is very expensive. It's 450 bucks. It is meant to give you a swift kick in the nuts so you take it seriously and stop spending more than you make. So there you go. That's the short version. I'm not going to plug it more than that. Uh, that's it. That's it. Oh, wait, one more. Aubrey, 14 Canadian bucks. The book of numbers is on the way. A good man or gal. Sorry, Aubrey. Good, good woman. Thank you for buying that. Is that it? That's it. All right. Um, I will see you guys later. Toodles.